Thanks everyone for joining today. This is the Sankalp Dialogues, looking at turning crisis into opportunity, focusing on several stories from Zambian entrepreneurs. Uh, we really appreciate your joining us today. It would be great uh, as you join, if you can just mention in the chat box where you're from um, and what your sort of organization is. Um, it would be great to just hear you know, who's joining us today. So do let us know in the chat uh, who you are and where you're coming from. Welcome to everyone. Um, my name is Ariel Molino with IntelliCap and I lead our Sankalp Forum in Africa. I am based in Nairobi. Uh, just to give you some background, uh, Abhishek, if you wanna go to the next slide, please. Uh, Sankalp is the largest convening for the impact investing and entrepreneurial community for and by the Global South. We've hosted 21 editions across India, Kenya, and Indonesia in the last 10 years. And we've launched these Sankalp Dialogues earlier this year to provide multiple touch points throughout the year for the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, so today's discussion is going to highlight three entrepreneurial journeys uh, from Zambia. Just like the rest of the world, as we all sort of fight uh, the, the economic impacts of COVID, entrepreneurs world round are really experiencing very difficult challenges in, in running their businesses day to day. Uh, th but this dialogue doesn't want to highlight the negatives, but really focusing um, on, on the opportunity that this also provides to entrepreneurs in the Zambian environment. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Chama. Uh, to say a word on our partner for this session, Clint, and to introduce our speakers. Welcome, Chama. Thank you so much, Aurelio. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello, Kavia. How are you? Hi. Okay, so uh, I'm Chama Sampa from Clean Consulting in Zambia, and we're so delighted to be partnering with uh, Suncup for the very first ever Suncup Dialogue Zambia, which will always, which we are very grateful to have been the co-host of. So, so Client Consulting is a firm that manages and advises uh, businesses in Zambia that are into ecosystems through various startups, catalyzers, accelerators, and business development. It's been in existence for the past 14 years within Sango Sewale as the, the lead consultant who I'm grateful to be working with. And we're so delighted to be partnered with Sanko. So without further ado, let me introduce our interesting panel of entrepreneurs that are going to help us today talk about the topic of how COVID is affecting businesses in Zambia. The first speaker is Tombo Chula from Just Fresh Food Farms. And the next is Elizabeth Malama, who is the Soweto Uber. And we've also got Mwaka Mbikosita Lewanika, the, co -found, the founder of Tomari. So these entrepreneurs are going to help us talk about how COVID has uh, affected their businesses and how they have managed to uh, to navigate through the problem that everybody is complaining about and it has affected so many businesses around. So I will let them introduce themselves to tell us more about their businesses and what it is they do in the business. I'll start with uh, Trumbo, then Elizabeth, and then Mwaka. Okay, thank you very much. Are you able to get me? Yes, we are. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, my name is Twambo Chula. Um, I am the, uh, the director and uh, CEO for Just Fresh Food Farms. Okay, so Just Fresh Food Farms is, um, is, an, is a Zambian organization. Um, um, which specializes basically in the uh, agricultural food supply chain. Okay, so our role basically is uh, to provide a market for the small holder farmers here in Zambia. And uh, basically what we do is um, we buy farm produce from the farmers. 
Okay, we buy farm produce from the farmers and then we sell it to uh, other business entities that uh, may have a need for the food, uh, food products, okay? So we sell it to two categories of customers. We have the, um, the business customers as well as the end user customers, okay? So for the, uh, for the end user customers, uh, we have made what are known as the subscription boxes, uh, which we've named after the, the rivers in Zambia. We have the Luangwa River, we have the, um, uh, the Kafue and the Zambezi Rivers. So we have the Luangwa box, uh, we have the Zambezi box, we also have the, the Kafue boxes. Okay, so these are the packages that we have basically for the end user consumers. However, on the other hand, uh, we have um, uh, a market with the business, um, business community. So business community entails uh, companies uh, that process food, companies that provide, uh, that are in the hospitality industry or uh, restaurants, if you may want, and supermarkets, so to speak, okay? So we came up with this idea basically out of a need. Um, if, I, if I'm given time, I'll, I'm going to basically highlight how we came up with this one, uh, this Just Fresh Food Farms. Okay, so in 2017, uh, we carried out a survey in among us, the small scale farmers, and basically on the survey, we wanted to find out the need um, or the challenges that the small scale farmers were facing uh, looking at the whole food supply chain. And one of the things that came out very strong was the issue of market. And so uh, in trying to resolve the challenges that the farmers were facing, we came up with the Just Fresh Food Farms uh, uh, idea or innovation. Okay, so basically in a nutshell, uh, Just Fresh Food Farms is there to create market for the small scale farmers who may have challenges to do with market for their farm produce. Thank you. Thank you, Chombo. Elizabeth? Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Malama. I am director for a company called Soweto Uva. So it's a Uber is a COVID baby. It was, uh, pre it was actually <laughs> registered uh, under the COVID season. So originally I'm from the travel industry. I ran a company called Ukwenda Travel, which uh, promotes local tourism in Zambia. But that wasn't going very well when we had a lockdown and I had to uh, get everybody off the office and resign everybody and uh, close shop. And I really didn't know what to do next. That's when uh, Soweto Uber was born. So Soweto Uber takes the market to the client. Uh, Soweto is the biggest market in Lusaka, is this, uh, where we buy all our dry foods, all, all our indigenous foods. And when the COVID happened, um, there was quite a shutdown because people were now scared to go to the market to buy food in the fear of getting COVID because it's quite congested. Every day there's about 10,000 people in the market. So what I thought to do was to create the bridge between the marketeer and the client. So I get the uh, prices as they are on the market. I don't add um, commission on the products that are the market, I, I, but I charge for the service. I charge to get the food from the market into your home. So I get, I, you, you send me your order, I get the things for you from the market and I bring it to your home and the clients pay for the service to get the product to their home. It has um, grown very fondly for the community that uh, thought that it was a clever way of getting them the food they needed even in lockdown and also for the maketeers just to grow on um, how many people are actually buying food from them even when they lost business almost immediately. So it's been a fantastic journey, but that's what I do. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Martha? Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, <laughs> depending on which part of the world you are at. My name is Mwakambi Salewanika. I'm a banker by profession. My past experience, I resigned to start a program in leadership public speaking, teamwork, time management for children from as early as four years old. I engaged different schools. In the beginning, I would work with different schools and take my program to the schools. 
fortunately and unfortunately, COVID happened. Why am I saying fortunately? Because it made me think beyond what I would have thought without COVID. Schools closed down, meaning I lost all my clients. My business went down. I read a lot and there's a quote that I live by most of the time. It says, failure will never overtake my determination if it's strong enough. So knowing that I'm very determined to succeed and to change, to contribute in changing the world. After COVID, I started a new program which was born during the COVID period after the semi-lockdown that we had in Zambia. I thought of online support school system. On top of the public speaking, I added regular school curriculum for the children, which is online, and I use Zoom. That way I'm able to interact with the children, I'm able to write on the board, it's more like they're in class. COVID helped me to realize that I could go even outside Zambia. I always believe every problem has a solution and every problem opens up new doors and it has really opened up new doors i've got clients from different countries now which i wouldn't have thought of doing without COVID. so right now i'm doing online school support even my program for the public speaking for the children we do it online that's basically what i'm currently doing thank you so much and we picked this uh, topic basically to try and understand how entrepreneurs are moving and maneuvering around the COVID era. Many businesses have been affected. Some have had to close and the others have, to, have had to scale down on their operations because they can't sustain a very huge workforce. And we're hoping that this dialogue will encourage someone who is struggling in the SME and any business that they're doing, that they can actually use this uh, pandemic to their advantage. So now I'll get to the panelists and we get into business now. Um, what we're going to find out is what has been the impact on your businesses? As you've man man navigated your way around to the COVID era. What have been the effects of COVID on yourselves, your businesses uh, in terms of uh, uh, recovering from uh, the lack of support because people have had to lose jobs and people have had to stop doing their regular uh, routines. So what has been the impact? on all your businesses. I'm going to start with Mwaka, then we can do Pambo and then Elizabeth. Okay, thank you very much for that question. There's been both positive and negative impact. The fact you've already mentioned, people have lost jobs, some, have, some salaries have been cut down, meaning there's a lot of financial challenges with everyone. And to run a business, you need people to have money. Therefore, Looking at what I do, it is a need for everyone. Education is a need, and I've come up with a solution to a need. So meaning if uh, people would, if it's a need, people go out of their way to find the finances to empower their children and themselves. Of course, there's been a negative impact in a way that I had so many schools, so many students, and everything dropped from like 50 to zero. Having a solution to a need has actually caused a positive impact from a negative, which is losing clients, to a positive. I always try, by all means, to focus more on the little positives and concentrate so much on the negative because negative can really draw, drain you. And the positive is, even though the clients are not as many as I did have before the COVID, at least I'm able to come up with a solution that will go even beyond this period, which is the online schooling. 
it will go beyond this. I will able to I'll be able to tackle, which I'm still able to tackle people outside the country. Therefore, for me, I want to look at this as a positive impact that it has had on my business. I'm concentrating on the negative impact. There's a lot of negative impacts, but the problems that uh, COVID has brought, there are a lot of solutions that a lot of entrepreneurs can come up with, aside from what Elizabeth, what Twombo and myself have come up with. There's a lot of opportunities out there. So look at the impact that the negative impact and create a solution to make it a positive impact. Thank you so much, Maka. Humble. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. So uh, the COVID pandemic actually has brought in a lot of challenges for the small and medium enterprises like ourselves. So like I earlier mentioned, um, our business model for us, it runs on two aspects. Um, the first one being the, um, um, the aspect of the bulk supply, okay? So um, uh, with the coming in of uh, the COVID pandemic, what basically happened now was uh, uh, the, we experienced a lot of shutdowns, okay? So the bulk supply part of our business experienced a very significant uh, challenges in, them, uh, in the sense that um, most of our clients actually closed down. You discover that uh, hotels were closed down, restaurants were closed down. And so we could not be able to make money uh, from, the, uh, from the, uh, the bulk supply part of our business. Okay, so we, 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 we had to sit down and re-strategize now with our business, with my business partner to find ways on how we're going to navigate through this uh, COVID pandemic uh, situation that we are going through, okay? Because we're experiencing re re a reduction in our revenues, okay? And then also there's... Uh, Okay, we seem to be losing Tombo there. Uh, Tombo, can you hear me? Elizabeth? Okay, um, for, for oh, somebody sorry. like myself who is coming from a travel industry um, that has been impacted very negatively in this uh, pandemic. I think we are the worst that were hit in the pandemic because we shut down completely. Um, that created for me having to let go of five of my staff to start from scratch, to have to settle bills almost immediately because airlines were getting nervous, everybody, hotels were getting nervous and we had to pay up bills that we did not plan for. Um, it created, you know, you, you, if you're feeding five homes, you feel like you're doing something for the world, then all of a sudden you can't even do the little you can do for five homes and you have to let go of your stuff. That for me was the hardest um, uh, as an employer to let go of myself, hard decisions that an entrepreneur, I guess, has to make. But on the lighter note, it created an opportunity for me to think outside the box, to um, to, uh, to find something to do, you know, uh, being a mom of girls uh, and feeding my children on my own, shutting down a business means that I have to look for food for my kids. And um, that desperation, of course, being the, 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 the pandemic had to create, I had to find opportunities somewhere to keep my family going. I think most of us were impacted even in our own homes. It was just not our businesses, but even our homes were greatly impacted by the pandemic. And for me, it was uh, important to find something to do. And um, the Soweto Uber has created a relief of some sort that I'm able to provide shelter and accommodation um, and food for my kids and make sure they just, they just have a decent life while I get back on my feet, it's been exciting for us. I, I do the business with my kids. We go to the markets together, we buy food together and we deliver together. Another opportunity to teach my children skill, 
to be able to do stuff on their own, something that is, was very new for us. So the, the impact on our business, yes, on the travel business was bad, but on the, on the delivery business, it was like, you know, uh, the best time really, everybody has to eat. And um, we had one order, then we had five orders, then we had 15 orders, you know, and they kept going up and up. So it's been awesome to see how that transition has happened and the impact. Yeah, travel failed, but it will pick up again, I'm sure, but the Soweto Uber is having a piece. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Trumbo, I see your background. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> I don't know how uh, where I even ended, <laughs> but yeah. So the gist is that the, the box supply kind of part of our business failed, but then we had to find a, a way to be able to make money even in the COVID era. Okay, so we came up with a ways a web-based um, e-commerce store, so to speak, to be able to allow customers to buy. Uh, farm produce from their homes, and then we bridge the gap between the farmer and the, uh, and, the and the customers. Okay, so we would, like I mentioned, we would package this. Uh, we package these vegetables in uh, different categories of boxes, and then be able to to supply these boxes to end user consumers. Okay, so we started this business, uh, this these boxes in in February this year. Okay, and trust me, uh, we, we have uh, seen a significant uh, amount of uh, growth in terms of sales because uh, what actually was meant to bar us, the COVID-19, created an opportunity for this, uh, 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 we are calling it the subscription boxes business to actually be able to thrive because people were not moving, but then at the end of the day, people needed to eat, okay? People need to eat. So we had orders actually that were coming from as far back as, uh, I mean, as far as um, Denmark. We had customers from the USA who are buying these uh, products from uh, for their families here in Zambia. Okay, so um, I I learned that um, in so in situations like we had the COVID uh, nine, like we have the COVID nineteen currently, we are able to use the digital tools that are actually available right now to be able to. Uh, to to uh, to meet the needs of the customers, both the ones that are in Zambia as well as the customers that are, are even based outside Zambia. Why? Because uh, everyone now has got. If you have got uh, a platform, um, a web-based platform, everyone is able to access your services, whether they are based in Zambia or they are based um, uh, elsewhere. So, in the midst of COVID, for us, we found. Um, our business actually thrived on the uh, on the in the in the in the aspect of subscription boxes because people needed to eat, people needed you know to have access to nutritious foods even in times of COVID because actually most of the information that was coming for COVID was to encourage people to eat healthy. Okay, so um, having access to the fruits and the vegetables that we provided for. Uh, the people was actually a plus even in the times of COVID, okay? So for me, my encouragement to the other entrepreneurs out there is that um, circumstances are going to come, okay? Uh, negative circumstances are going to come to hinder your businesses from going up, but then it is incumbent upon ourselves as entrepreneurs to be able to find new ways of doing business because that's what innovation entails, okay? Uh, you can have an innovation today, but within a few days' time, it may cease to be an innovation because our time uh, changes, okay? So it is incumbent upon ourselves to continue to think of new ways. We need to be able to devise strategies and new ways of, of, of course, meeting the needs of the people because that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um... Any questions from the reviewers should be sent through to the chat group and we'll pass them on to the panelists. Uh, so I want to find out what measures have you put in place 
for your business to, to fully recover as right now you're just in this stage where you're developing now what happens after what what are you putting in place so that you stay afloat now and six months to come elizabeth marker and Twombo. Oh, for us, uh, we would like to believe that this is a business that will stay even after the pandemic, um, because uh, what we have tried to do is to create a convenient way of people getting to the market. Uh, as you know, 80% uh, of, uh, of our population depend on market supply because the costs are low and they can't afford to go to supermarkets. What we have done is to bring the market on um, on a platform on www.sowetouber.com. And like uh, Twombo said, for, uh, we have buyers everywhere. We are also sending food as far as the US ourselves. So we don't only just have clients buying for families here, we also have um, clients overseas as well. And we would like to grow that community as well to see that even after the COVID, we always have our clients uh, buying products from us. So it's easier for them to shop, send us the money or pay online and actually uh, just get them to supply the food. We plan to work towards strengthening uh, our service um, even after the COVID. As you know, most people are reactive right now because of the COVID uh, pandemic and they would use you because they are afraid to go to the market. Um, what we would like, what we would like to do moving forward and that's what we are working on is even if it's okay for you to go to the market, we want to create a convenient sort of platform for you to still sit back in your home, uh, use an app of some sort, buy your food, and it comes to your house. It comes into your home. That's the only way that we will be able to sustain the business even after the COVID. So we are working on that. Of course, uh, service always sells. We try to be as as you know courteous as possible. We try to pick the the fresh foods. Some of our clients say that we pick better food than they pick when they go to the market. We'd like to keep it that way. We're trying to impress our clients to just keep you know, our clients happy and to make sure that they continue buying from us even after the pandemic. So we are working on it. It's something that is work in progress. Yes, right now it's in survival mode, but I feel that with the right platforms in place, we will be able to stay on even after the pandemic. So we're looking forward to that. Awesome, awesome. Marker? Yes, yes. The measures that uh, Tomori has put in place uh, to stay alive with the new program that we've started even after COVID. Looking at parents, this, it's, it's a long, when I was growing up, usually it was a father is going to work and the mother is staying home with the children. It's really difficult with having a full full-time job for a mother and a full-time job for a father to even have time to assist the former for their children. But looking at the era we are in, children are very good with technology now. All they have to do is a click of a button, Koto Mwari, we assist them with their homework even after the COVID. We'll be able to assist them with their homework, tuition, a parent doesn't have to leave work, find time to run away from work, take the child for tuition, take the child to school. When schools reopen, we'll be doing school pickups for the children. You want tuition for a child, we pick them up, go with them at our facility, teach them, then you pick them up after work. Even after 18 hours, we, we're planning on extending the hours of pickup for the children, that the online would definitely still continue. Looking, I've got children from South Africa, from Japan, so to see that it has grown that much and we are looking forward to a bigger growth. Why are we teaching public speaking, customer service, time management, teamwork to four-year-olds? A lot of parents are asking, why would you teach that to a four-year-old? That's more reason we are having a lot of hiccup in Zambia when it comes to time management. We've got this tendency of, oh, Zambian time, you say 14, someone is coming at 15. This is something that we need to get past with the generation that is coming after us. If someone calls you, be here at 3 p.m., make sure to be there five, 10 minutes early. That's the generation we are trying to create because we want them to be leaders 
even before they get a leadership title. We always wait to have that leadership title for us to behave as leaders. I might not have a title, but it's supposed to be in me to behave and treat people as their leader when something is wrong. This is something that we are teaching. Not only Zambian children need it, children from other countries need it too, and they're able to get to Tomari via online even after this COVID period. And actually, we are hoping and seeing. When I look forward, I'm looking at having actually more clients after the COVID because people will be back at work, their finances will be back uh, to normal and everything. So we are looking at having more children, teaching them public speaking. When you go, like when, from the time I was in the corporate world, you go in a management meeting and you have different countries, Zambians will be quiet. It's either they are afraid to talk, they haven't learned how to speak, there's just something about us Zambians. You've got something to say, but you want to keep quiet. We need our children to have confidence. Whether what you're saying, your idea could be rejected, but speak it out. You might be thinking A, but when you say the A, someone might say, oh, this A, we can turn it into a B. Then it will work out. You know, your idea is very relevant at all times. So looking forward, our measures is to grow this business after the COVID it will actually grow more because now we are only doing online. After the COVID, we'll have both online and physical, which is better growth for us. To every entrepreneur, I want to encourage you, whatever business you're going to think of now, don't drop it after this period. Continue with it and look at the needs of the people and make it your business. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mwaka. Uh, Mwaka, a quick one. Is there a policy or something deliberate that you've done to access the children that don't have access to internet? Are you doing anything to cater for those children? Because most of the children in government schools don't have access to internet. So how are you bridging the gap between the children that have access to internet and the children that don't have access to internet? Okay, the way we are bridging the gap, there's a few who's, if your parent, the parents are comfortable, I go to their homes. For now, I go to their homes. Then before COVID, actually, because with my program, I believe no child should be left behind. Whether I have a privileged child or not, before COVID, we would go with the same program to community schools and teach the children public speaking, leadership, teamwork. And it was, it's, it's actually still touching to realize what I was teaching a child at ASL, who's in grade one, I had to teach it to a grade seven in a community school. That's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. And I want to encourage every entrepreneur, whatever it is, whatever business you're in, find one or two social responsibilities that you are going to help. It is very important for us as entrepreneurs to give back to the community. Let's not look at, okay, what will I get from this? Let's not only look at the financial part we are getting, but what are we contributing to the less privileged? Thank you so much, Marka. Tombo, what, is, what are the measures you put in place? Uh, uh, very elaborate from Marka there. I'm happy for that. Um, so on, uh, on the part of Just Fresh Food Farms, um, um, I'm looking at the services that Mwaka is providing, actually, for Mwaka, you know, they are, they are, they are intangible, intangible services, but then on our part, for us, uh, it's the tangibles. Somebody had, has to touch the food, somebody has to feel the food, okay? <laughs> yeah, and so with the tangibility that comes in providing a service, uh, the most important part that uh, we have to play as just fresh food farms is the, the logistics aspect of it, okay? So, like I earlier mentioned, um, the bulk supply part of our business, of course, uh, to, 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 to reduce, so to speak, in terms of quantity. So, I mean, buy these products from. Uh, also, uh, we're not receiving significant amount of income, okay? Because uh, we had lost business. Uh, and also for them, it means that there's a loss in business, okay? 
So going forward, what have we been doing? Okay. So the revenues that we've been uh, obtaining from the uh, the uh, the subscription boxes, there's a there's a term uh, there's a term we call bootstrapping. Okay. So we've been uh, we've managed to save quite significant amounts of money uh, that we've received from um, from the subscription boxes. And so the reason why we've done that that is because the economy is not going to close forever. We know that the economy has open in certain sectors um, around us. The bootstrapping kind of uh, arrangement that I'm uh, talking about now is where you save money from the subscription boxes to be able to buy a larger chunk of uh, food products from the farmers that we have. I'll tell you this. Currently now, um, currently now what we are doing is um, um, we are only uh, receiving products from uh, farmers, small-scale farmers, uh, just within Osaka. But our plan is, uh, after the, the opening up fully of the economy, we want to touch every part of the farmer in the country. We want to reach out to every farmer in the country to be able to buy these um, horticultural products from the farmers so that we help them to find market uh, for their produce, okay? It's very, very important uh, on the, and very, very uh, exciting for a farmer to ensure that uh, when they know that the products that they are growing actually have a ready market already, okay? So it's been very uh, sad on our part that we've not been able to reach out to a lot of farmers in terms of uh, getting this farm produce to be able to actually buy from them and then be able to sell to uh, other business uh, clientele. But then going forward, uh, our, the measures that we've put in place is basically um, saving. We've been able to, uh, we've come up with a deliberate um, arrangement within ourselves as an organization to be able to save a little bit of money that we've managed to get from the uh, subscription boxes so that in times when the economy is fully open, we will be able to now reach out to the other small scale farmers, not just within Lusaka, but even in the outskirts of Lusaka to ensure that um, uh, we buy products from them because when you buy products from a holder farmer, it means that um, more access to nutritious foods and you know in this uh, uh, COVID period that we are still in it's very very important that even a small scale farmer uh, out there in the rural parts of Zambia also has access to nutritious foods and if they can't make money they can't buy these nutritious foods. So going forward there's a fund that we've created ourselves that we want to utilize uh, to be able to get more and more farm produce from the small scale farmers uh, beyond the borders of uh, Lusaka province. Okay. Thank you so much, Pombo. Uh, supply chains, supply chains. Um, mostly this is for Elizabeth and uh, Twambo because you're dealing in the food sector where you need your mm -hmm. supply chains, uh, supplying you constantly and on time and also quality control. Yes. How has COVID affected your link between the suppliers, yourselves, and then the consumers? And how are you using technology to incorporate the, your suppliers and getting your product to the consumers? How are you marrying the two? And okay, that? so for us, uh, there's always supply at the market. <laughs> there's always supply, plenty of supply at the market. We have no problem with supply. Um, of course, the price hikes because the products are not coming to the market on time. That has been a huge impact on us. So sometimes we would put a price list on our, on our site that um, we have to change almost every now and again because um, uh, the suppliers have hiked the prices because there's not enough supply into the market from farmers or from um, parts of the country where they're getting dry foods. So we have had to, uh, uh, we have been highly impacted by that. So there's this whole wave of price uh, change. So, uh, you find, you know, caterpillars today are 140 and tomorrow they are 200. 
you have to go back to the client that the price is wrong because of that. Um, we have created a website where we have put all our uh, products from the market. So when you go to our website, everything is on, on the market is really on the site. So from Carpenter to Vinkubala to Fish, you know, to uh, Delele, everything is on the site. And the clients can go on the site, can do a shopping list, can pay online with their card, and their payment will come to us. And all we do is just pick up the stuff that they picked up from. So for us, technology has been of great help. Also platforms like WhatsApp, you know, some clients are not comfortable with, uh, with buying things online. So they would rather send you a WhatsApp list and uh, you confirm their order and they're able to send you money via mobile money and you're able to do the shopping for them. But um, otherwise, our, our site has been quite welcomed, very shockingly so. We thought if we do an online store, it's going to be a problem. But uh, Zambians have warmed up to online shopping, which is awesome. And they're able to put in their details uh, and then they just send us the list. So we have been able to, especially to the, to the, to the, to the, to the customer, we, technology has helped very well. Um, also for us, because we, we want to minimize as much as touching money because of the COVID, we try not to, to go with cash to the market would rather stay away from holding cash because of the situation. What we do is then ask our marketeers to act to register for a mobile money facility, where when we buy the products, we actually just send them the money via mobile money and they're able to draw the money on their own. So we try to be as cashless as possible so that we don't have to have, you know, those kind of exchanges. So, so far, so good. Um, and yeah, there's always room for improvement, but we are working quite well with, uh, with our customers, especially. Thank you, there's a better Okay, Tom, I didn't get your question clearly. Maybe you can repeat it. Okay, um, you're dealing with the suppliers, especially yes, yes. since you don't go to the market like uh, Elizabeth is Uber does. How has COVID affected your supply chain from your suppliers to the products that you take to the consumers? And how are you using technology to fit in the two? Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, so like I earlier mentioned, uh, so the supply, uh, the food supply chain is very, very broad. Um, so for us, we cut off for a portion of the food supply chain. Okay, uh, which is from the the farmer to the to the to the business entity or to an end user consumer. Okay, so yeah, um, like I earlier mentioned again, um, uh, having an economy which is locked. For instance, the hotel, uh, the hospitality industry closed. We had uh, significant in terms of business. Um, so this then culminated into a loss of business on the part of the farmers, the small scale farmers, okay? Because if we don't buy from the farmers, then the farmers also don't sell, okay? Then there's also this issue now of um, the price fluctuations like uh, Elizabeth had mentioned, okay? Uh, sometimes when a farmer decides to go to the market, to an open market, they don't know what price they're going to sell that product at because at the market prices fluctuate. I'll tell you this, for instance, uh, just a few days ago, we had tomatoes that were selling at 50 quarter. Again, the other week you go back, you find that tomatoes are selling at maybe uh, 120 quarter, okay? So you have these uh, price fluctuations, which sometimes may not be very good on the part of a farmer, okay? Uh, because for us, uh, the way we engage with farmers, the prices are already fixed. A farmer knows the price at which they're going to sell their products at, okay? So such a disturbance on the part of the farmer, I've got, a, I've got a potential of affecting the cash flow of the farmer. Of course, they affected our cash flow, but then also on the part of the farmers, this has got a very serious effect because uh, if, for instance, you find that the prices for the products that you wish to sell at a certain price are very low, then that is 
uh, obviously will affect the, uh, the, uh, the financial uh, position of, of, of the farmer, okay? So then also for us on the, as, uh, the other aspect of including technology, okay? So when we created this web-based um, uh, platform for purchasing farm produce, uh, of course, we had to integrate now uh, a payment gateway, which is uh, we allow people to pay through Visa, we allow people to pay through mobile money, we allow people to pay through e-wallet, we allow people to pay uh, even uh, uh, what are these other mob um, mobile money, MTN money, and Airtel money, all these platforms, okay? So the reason why we are doing that is that um, we understand that there's a program by the government called the financial inclusion. What the government is trying to promote with the financial inclusion is to promote that more money is in circulation. And so our company is actually uh, uh, in line with government policy in terms of financial inclusion. Okay, so uh, we created that platform to also encourage farmers to be able to uh, transact cash uh, using uh, cashless means because as you may be aware, COVID also uh, can be transmitted from one person uh, to the other through through money, like the experts have, have, have mentioned. So the integration of technology in agribusiness or in the food supply chain cannot be overemphasized because uh, where we are going actually, let me tell you this actually, um, you know, we launched this um, online agro market in August last year, but from August last year on the 23rd of August when we launched it, we did not record any sale up to February this year. Why, why was it like that? Basically, it was to do with the mindset of Zambians. When you tell uh, the consumers uh, about you know, purchasing products online, uh, they will have this negative um, attitude towards it. But then when the COVID came in, because of the restrictions in the movements of people, we started recording significant amounts of people transacting oh. online, okay? So the use of technology, in my opinion, is very, very, very important. And every person is supposed to embrace uh, technology uh, in so far as finding solutions for the agribusiness sector, so to speak, okay? I know there are some, um, like the farmers that we deal with, sometimes, uh, you know, they're not tech conversant. But then for us, what we've done is uh, we've, uh, we are working on a solution for the USSD uh, arrangement where a farmer can use um, a non-online solution, uh, which is just an SMS, and be able to access our services. And this is something that we are working on, and we are sure that by the end of this year, it should begin working, okay? We are doing this because we know that uh, digital solutions are key in um, promoting and growing the agricultural business in Zambia, okay? I think that's basically what I had on that aspect. <clears throat> to find out how uh, you're managing financially? Have you had uh, people finance your businesses or it was basically out of your savings that you're uh, uh, pushing your way through? And if there's any uh, known sources of funding that you've come uh, in contact with, how are you managing financially? I can start with Mwaka, then Tuambo and Elizabeth. Okay, in terms of financially, for me, it was through my savings. Then on top of savings, we always, I've always heard read books where they say you can start a business without capital. What I was looking at when I was thinking outside the box was what can I do that will help people that doesn't need so much capital, that doesn't need me to go and look for someone to fund the business. And online worked for me because I'm at home. I'm in my house. I'm not moving. The only thing I need is my computer and to have stable internet at home. 
So that's the solution I got. I didn't need to go around trying to find who's going to fund me. And with this pandemic, there's, I'm sure there's a queue of people wanting to be funded. And that would take forever. And that's what I would like to encourage everyone. Think of something that you do that needs very, very minimal uh, finances for you to start. For me, it's just making sure I've got stable internet, I've got reliable internet. If I told you, the internet I'm using right now is like the sixth one I'm trying. I had okay. to keep trying from moving from one internet company to the next, the other one, until finally I didn't give up. I got one which I believe has really pulled me through and helped me. And I had to do some training in terms of technology. I'm not a technology type of person. For me, even the phone is just SMS. You tell me to do ABC with the phone. I I had no idea, but thank God for this pandemic. It has brought me to an open mind. As Twambo said, before the COVID, they had already opened the online platform, but very few Zambians would shop online. And this has also opened my mindset to say, okay, online is safe, it's good, it's convenient, it's comfortable. So in terms of finances, I went to a place where I didn't need so much finances. My savings, helped me to start up, yeah. Okay, that's great. Tombo? Yeah, thank you very much also. Um, um, sourcing for finance for a business is a very, very critical aspect, okay? So like, again, I, 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 I envy Mwaka, you know, who's providing tangible services and just through I mean, being on the internet, she's able to reach out to customers and uh, provide the service. But uh, on our part, it's not like that, okay? Because we deal with tangible services, okay? So sourcing for finances is a very, very critical aspect of every entrepreneur. But I must mention that before you begin, even the aspect of sourcing for finances, it's very, very important that you have an idea. What idea are you trying to to implement, okay? Because the idea is going to give you even the, uh, the, the amount of funding that you are going to look out for and all those things. So on my part, I, um, I used to work, um, like I mentioned earlier on, I'm a public health officer by profession, okay? So I used to work for the Ministry of Commerce, okay? So through, uh, you know, salaries and uh, through um, advances, I would get advances because in the first place I knew that I needed a very small vehicle for door-to-door -door deliveries with time. And I knew also that I needed a, a light truck to be able to use to move my uh, products from the farmer to the market and so on and so forth, okay? So I, I, I used the opportunity that I had, which is uh, formal employment, okay? I raised money through, you know, advances, you apply for advances and all those things. So in so doing, uh, these actually helped me to acquire the resources or the assets that I needed to kickstart a business, which is a very small car and a light truck, okay? So in doing so, uh, then I needed to ensure that I create a system that will keep on generating money because it's one thing to have acquired assets, okay, and then it's other, other thing to actually sustain a business. Usually I encourage people that for you to sustain a business, you need to have a business that actually makes sales. So for us, that was, that, that's what has kept us going. We ensure that in every transaction that we do as a business, we generate sales, which then allow us um, or give us an opportunity to reinvest in other, 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 other assets that we may need to grow our businesses. I may not lie, I've applied for grants and so on and so forth, but I've not had an, I've not had an opportunity to have a grant. So then does that mean that I should stop pursuing my passion? Does, does that mean that I should stop uh, um, finding solutions for the small scale farmers? Does that mean that I should cease to, you know, uh, do what I'm doing? No, definitely no. So I use what I have definitely and what we generate from the business to be able to 
grow this business, okay? So that's the method that we've used. Quite all right to had to use the, uh, the money from the uh, former employment, but then also uh, uh, just generation of sales. So for us, um, <laughs> it was, it's my, uh, the way I started my business was quite interesting because I didn't have any capital at all, at all, at all. When I say I didn't have any capital, I mean just that. When I closed my travel business, I sold off all my assets, including the car. So I was not mobile at all because I had to pay the suppliers, the airlines. So for me, it was savage. We had to start from scratch. And I started doing deliveries off a bus. I would get food from the market, I will get on the bus, and I'll go to the client to provide the service for the client. That's the way I started the business. I was busing with food with boxes to, to people's homes. It was just an interesting journey. And but I kept uh, I persisted. I didn't need capital. I promise you, I only had 50 kwacha, and that's a 50 kwacha. I bought airtime in my phone, I put a post up on Facebook. And, and people started making orders. And then um, as we went along, somebody met me and said, hi, how are you doing this business? I said, I bus, I go to the bus and I supply for my clients. I have to do something, you know? And uh, this person said, look, I have a car at my house. <laughs> if you want it, have it. So it can make your life a bit easier. But that is where I'm coming from. So for me, you don't need to have capital to start a business. All you need to do is to have to be resilient. You have to continue keep doing it until it works. Yes, now I have clients. I have got uh, uh, fuel for the car, but it didn't start like that. It started from nothing, and then it grew. Now I'm I'm saving money. I'm banking my profits. It didn't start like that. It started really from nothing. What what the the Soweto Uber business has now produced is a poultry farm. I'm now farming. Uh, chickens from the Soweto Uber business, but you couldn't believe that it started from 50 kwacha, you know? So it's, it is what it is. No capital. It's difficult to find capital in Zambia, but you can start from nothing. You can start from nothing. Absolutely. If your mind is fixed to get something done, it doesn't matter. You are unstoppable. You just keep doing it. Yeah. Okay. In interesting story there, Elizabeth. As we're on finances, um, Elizabeth, uh, you used to have a travel agency and I'm sure you had, uh, employees there. Hmm. How was, how was the transition on you closing down the business and letting go of your workforce? And I don't know about Twombo, if you also, uh, how many people you have Twombo on your workforce, if you've had to even lay off people, uh, just to mitigate your costs and everything. How has that transition been? And is there hope that these people could come back into your systems if you're stable? How was the transition on you releasing people? That's, I think the hardest to work really is to get, you know, fam companies are like families. I, I have, I had my, my workers for almost five years. Um, I, I like to keep the same people for a long time i believe in loyalty so for me to say look i can't keep you for a long time actually i stayed with them hoping that things would change and i started seeing that the bills were piling up so i had to be brave and and just do the right thing um of course it was hard it was hard for them and it, of course it was harder for me because i was I was hoping that I'd keep them and, and, and you know, help in the little way that I do by paying a wage every month, but then I couldn't do it. Uh, also, as a leader, you don't want your workers to see you crumble. I think we have that mentality to keep a face uh, when things are not working. And for me, that was a hard, a hard lesson. Uh, the travel business will come alive again, that I'm sure. Uh, already the local tourism has started to open up. And we are seeing more people calling us to ask if they can get away from the from the craze of Lusaka and just rest. Uh, and yeah, we are very optimistic that they will come back. And yeah, we'll have some some good news one of these days. But for now, unfortunately, we have to keep the doors <laughs> shut until further notice. But uh, yeah, I'm sure when the business picks up, we will be able to bring them back. 
Awesome, awesome. Fumble and Waka? Okay, so um, for the part of just fresh, um, I must mention that our, our structure even before was very lean. Uh, we just had uh, very, very few uh, members of staff uh, that were running uh, the Just Fresh Food um, business. Okay, so uh, by us, you know, focusing on the subscription boxes, fruits and vegetable boxes that we've been providing, uh, we managed actually to keep every one of us. Uh, we are all still intact and um, I actually sympathize with uh, my colleague, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, it's very, very hard usually to leave, uh, leave members of staff, to ask members of staff to leave and all those things. It's yeah. emotional, it's uh, usually a very sad, uh, very sad state. But for us, I think what helped us is just usually the, the few number of uh, staff that we had. And so, but of course we had to reduce on the amounts that we are getting. We, you know, you can't continue to get large amounts of money when there's actually no money. So we had to reduce and members of staff had to agree. And I mean, we've managed to pull through this uh, very, very hard time. Uh, it's very, very hard, but uh, we've managed to, to you know, survive uh, through these hard times. And we are hoping that when the bulk supply kind part of our business also begins to boom, uh, then, I mean, we may uh, we'll restore uh, the salaries and uh, the remunerations that uh, these uh, employees uh, we are getting. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a very very sad state. I agree oh. with uh, Eliza. Thank you so much, Pombo. Maka, For did me, you I have any staff? Yes, I did have two teachers who were assisting me with uh, reading, helping children to learn how to read as we were going through that. Having this pandemic actually for me the hiccup started before COVID. Remember there was gassing in Zambia? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> schools cancelled all afternoon activities. That was the beginning of the hiccup for me. Then just when schools sent me emails, oh next week we can start the gassing is no more, contacted the teachers, oh you guys get ready. Next week Wednesday we are back on track. The president announced schools have to shut down. It was really, really difficult for me to just come out. I could see myself in their shoes and seeing they have to, like one of my teachers had to leave the house she was renting to go and stay with her parents. That was very heartbreaking. It, it was a very difficult decision that, as, as Elizabeth said, I just mm -hmm. had to do the right thing, you know, instead of keeping people hoping that, okay, the month end has come, I'll get a salary and there's no money coming in. It was the right thing. And I believe and trust, like right now we are growing. So by next month, one of the teachers will come back helping me with the online because the number of children at least is increasing. So we are hoping for the best to get them back and get more teachers on board as well. Awesome, awesome interesting stories that we've heard from our panelists and what are the future implications now considering COVID-19 has taken away so much what are your plan your future plans your expansion plan has this pandemic given you a leeway to say you can expand beyond what you're doing or are you going to still maintain the same systems generally what is your preparation for the post-COVID. Maka, Trumbo, and Elizabeth. Okay, for the future plans, post-COVID will actually help, as I said earlier on, it will help the business grow more because new ideas have come up because of the COVID. So meaning it will grow beyond what my original plan for the business or the organization was. My original plan was only physical, working with schools, having some children come home over the weekend. But right now, it's a blessing in disguise, I would like to say, because it has broadened the business idea to beyond Zambia. I was only looking at Lusaka, but to just think 
right now I can go outside Africa, I can go to Asia, America, Europe with the same concept. It's really amazing. Without COVID, I don't see myself having had such kind of a thought of thinking of going beyond the borders. So future plans, we are growing bigger. I'm very positive we're going to grow bigger. Wonderful, Trumbo. Yeah, I also agree with Mwaka. You know, the COVID, um, the COVID period has actually opened up for me. My personally, it has opened up my mind. Uh, I used to take this business for the boxes very lightly, but now, but now companies that are contacting us to actually be able to supply them these boxes uh, in large quantities okay so uh this uh, the covid uh period has actually come as a blessing in disguise i know uh, other families have lost members of uh, their families and so on and so forth yeah but then looking at it from the positive aspect of it uh, this is a very 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 uh, promising period it has opened up our minds and just uh, to mention to you that uh, in July, I mean in June, uh, this year we managed to add another service to the website, which is called the Agribusiness Directory. So the Agribusiness Directory gives an opportunity now for even input suppliers, you know, seed companies, uh, uh, these pesticides and insecticide, all these people now are able also to actually market their products on our platform. Okay, so it's it's been a very, very challenging moment, but it's also been an eye opener. We are now having these input suppliers coming on board to market their products using our website. Okay, so it's it's an eye opener. Also, what we we endeavor to do is uh, uh, we plan also to just revamp the bulk supply business because for us we believe that the bulk supply business is what actually helps us to also. Uh, have a positive impact on the lives of farmers and we are prepared for uh, this. I know we might not prepare for it adequately in terms of uh, having to uh, finance it as we planned it to be for this year, but then uh, looking at what we have so far, we'll be able to do the little that we can to be able to support the small scale farmers that are, are even beyond the borders of Lusaka. Okay, so that um, uh, we uh, we contribute to the food security of uh, the country. Also, just to mention that uh, uh, there's a there's a proposal that we are doing as just fresh food farms. This proposal is for value addition uh, activities for the digit uh, for the horticultural sector. We we don't want to end at just uh, supplying and producing raw foods. We also plan to be adding value to this product so that we increase the shelf life period and so that we also have uh, an international market, okay? So we, we, uh, we in this uh, project that we are doing, we, uh, we want to, we are looking at uh, the market that is beyond the borders of Zambia because uh, we believe that Zambia is one of the actually very good producers of horticultural products, but we believe that these products can also be accepted and be appreciated uh, in other uh, other jurisdictions. Like, for instance, last year we had uh, colleagues from Angola who expressed interest to be receiving uh, uh, these fruits and veggies products in their country. So this is something that we are working on. Uh, we keep dreaming about it, working hard about it day and night to ensure that it comes to fruition. And at an opportune time, we'll be able to announce uh, uh, to the members of the public and to you, our, our partners, on how far we've gone with it. Thank you Thank very much. you so much, Trumbo. Thank you. Elizabeth. As, uh, the pandemic, um, unfortunately, our lives will never be the same. But fortunately enough, it has transformed the way we think. And um, it's fantastic how your mind can just go crazy in just how big you can be. So for Soweto Uber, we want to be on every phone. We want to be in every home. 
we want to be in every city, we want to take it all, we want it, we want it, and we can only, you know, we can only, you know, think as far as we want. We want the whole cake, guys. We want the whole <laughs> cake. <laughs> so, so for us, we want to grow an app where you can buy your food from the market. We want to be on your, you know, on your speed dial for anything, for Chilanga Milo, for kitchen party, for your wedding. We want to be in your home. We want to stay there and we want to grow. We can grow from from one van, we want to have vans, we want to have motorbikes, we want to have, you know, cycle guys that's cycling around the city and dropping off dry foods and vegetables. That's, that's the future for us. I think we can only, as the Bible says, as your mind thinketh, and so are you. So our minds really right now are quite big, guys. <laughs> so awesome. we plan to yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. We've really had an interesting discussion today. Thank you so much to the panelists for the insight into the businesses. In the next 10 minutes, we're going to have a poll so everybody who is online can vote and tell us what they think about the Sandcup Forum and the Sandcup Dialogue. So it will pop up and then you can vote and then we'll see where we go from there. We have some questions for our panelists and People are excited and they're encouraged with your initiatives and your tenacity. Uh, the question is for Elizabeth. Yes, Elizabeth, um, there's a question here from the uh, viewers and they want to know how is it that you're ensuring safety? Uh, because with the social distancing for yourselves and your customers as well, how are you ensuring that during your deliveries and as you purchase product? So for us, uh, we have now uh, a, a, a phone list of suppliers from the market. So we make orders before we go to the market just to reduce on, um, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, interactions uh, we are getting we have a place where we pack the van and normally our suppliers will bring the foods there of course we have had to invest in our suppliers having to wear masks all the time so that is easier for us to you know converse like I said we are not we are cashless we try not to have money in our hands so we do transactions via mobile money to our suppliers and then our clients also pay us by by um, our mobile money when we are going to do a delivery we make sure that we are wearing uh, you know the gear that is protective we are wearing our masks we're wearing gloves we make sure that we are not exposed in any way and we encourage our clients to only have one person collecting the goods also wearing masks also wearing gloves so that we don't have that kind of interaction so we are very for us we are very strong on getting yourself geared up for getting outside so, right, so far, so good. I'm still COVID free. I was just tested recently. So I think I'm doing a good job at that. <laughs> okay, that is wonderful to hear. Okay, Elizabeth, I'm going to give you all your questions now so that you can go through them quickly and give me the answers to that, which the uh, viewers have given. And they want to know what happens uh, post COVID. Do you see your Uber business still carrying on? And uh, they say someone is very encouraged with your story, the good innovations, but then they want to know how can you share the transition from one business to another? So from, um, so for, uh, if is the business going to, to be there? Post COVID, definitely it's going to be there. It's a good cash cow. It's a very good cash cow. There's always money in your pocket every day. It's something that was not there in the travel business. Eh? Sometimes you'd have dry days, but not the Soweto Uber. There's always money around. I would like to empower the youth um, and grow a community. I've met some brilliant young men and women in the market that don't have anything to do. So my plan is to get them involved in the business, train them how to deliver food, and then they do it themselves and I just manage, manage them. Um, transition from one business to another, it's uh, all in your head, it's all in your head. Look, I was an office girl, I just knew how to type. 
and then all of a sudden I needed to get out and get grinding and it's a whole different uh, scenario but it's possible all you have to do is just get the same skills you have been using to manage your finances from this one business and just move it there so this this is not the only business I do I do a menstrual cup business as well and I've, I adopted all the principles I was doing in the travel business to run a hygiene business. Uh, so uh, it's just your mindset. If you have the mind for it, go for it. And it just doesn't change anything. You are just selling a different product. So for us, like if you, are, if you see my line of work, I'm a service person. I provide services. So if you see, if you see from my own line of work, that's my strength. So I just capitalize on my strength, which is service, and I just provide uh, it in a, in a different way. Did I just say yeah? Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, Thank you. Uh, this is a question for Maka. Maka, how do you charge for billing these services, especially that the training and coaching are intangible? Okay. The training and coaching could be intangible, but these are skills that we all need. It's a lifetime skill. It's skills that will help you in your career, that will help you in your businesses. So despite them being tangible, they are very vital to our growing. You can ask Elizabeth. She needed to be very good with customer service to run both the travel and the, and the Soweto Uber. So these are things that we really need. They are skills that regardless which field you go to, you need. Education, which has best after COVID, the online support education. Children are going to school. School is intangible, but you still pay school fees. So this is an intangible business, but skills that are needed and are very vital. They will help to the growth of our economy in both short and long term. And how I charge, online people pay through mobile money e-wallet bank transfer i i'm not handling any cash it's through remote payment thank you so much Marsha. um i've got some general questions which any of you could pick up um people want to find out what would be the advice from you guys as you uh, maneuvered your way around the COVID on man on scaling up your businesses. The key things to consider when scaling down. Scaling up or scaling down? Scaling up or scaling down. down. Scaling down. What hmm. what should people consider when they want to scale down? Humble. Okay, uh, uh, depending on the meaning of scaling down, <laughs> you have to scale down in the number of employees and scale down in the amount of money that you'll be getting or in terms of pro productivity. Yeah, so it depends. So, for instance, like uh, on the aspect of uh, maybe scaling down in terms of uh, salaries, I think the most important thing for us that worked out is engagement. Okay. So it's very, very important to engage each and every member of staff that you have on the, uh, as an organization or as a business to ensure that, I mean, they understand what, what is happening with the organization, okay? So sometimes you actually have them uh, look at the books, okay? They need to look at the, the books and see how the, uh, the company is performing such that when you, um, the time for you to announce the issue of scaling down uh, comes up, there should be an understanding from every employee, uh, depending with the level uh, of, uh, depending with, I mean, not even depending with, the, regardless of the level at which they are at, because, uh, I mean, they understand that currently the company is not performing very well. So the most important thing, in my opinion, is engagement. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tambo. Thank you. Uh, Mwaka. Uh, you've got a question here where somebody wants to know how you can help the Ministry of Education to adapt to online learning and providing a good service like you do. How would they utilize the IT services like you do? 
Okay, all right. Right now, um, in talks with someone to get me to talk to the Minister of Education, I want to see how we can work together in putting this probably by, I'm thinking of a way of having, looking at social distancing, having different, especially the grades that are a little bit higher, like grade five, because I know they haven't done anything from the time school is closed. If we could have a platform that can take up maybe 10 kids at a time for a start, whereby they just put something online. Anyway, something that's in the, in the way I'm yet to meet with them and talk to them, like the Ministry of Education. This is something that I've put upon myself that as my motto is leave no child behind, children are my passion. I love to see every child happy. I love to see every child grab every opportunity that I can. So I'm yet to sit down with the Ministry of Education and see how we can go around it. But it is something that I feel and know has to be implemented even in the government schools, government and community schools as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be looking forward to that implementation. Here's some good messages from the viewers. Um, really inspiring stories. There's so much that they've learned. Thank you for sharing your stories. They're really motivated. And we've got some interesting feedback. Uh, Tombo, could you? Tombo, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Uh, uh, hello. Can get you. Okay, Tombo. Yes, please. I can hear you. Okay, so Twambo, uh, somebody wants to know, um, what motivation can you give them? They're in Zimbabwe and they want to learn uh, what, what it is that you're doing? What motivation do you have for them in the COVID era in Zimbabwe? They're a business developer and they want to know what it is that they can do in that economic state. Okay. I, 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 I may not have um, um, accurate data regarding the performance of the Zimbabwean economy at the moment, but I believe uh, just like Zambia, Zimbabwe has also been affected negatively uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, this COVID pandemic. Okay, so considering that you are a developer, actually, for me, you have what it takes to create an innovation for what is uh, currently obtaining uh, right now, especially in the food in the food sector. Okay, if you are a developer, for instance, uh, you are able. To to create um, uh, uh, a web-based uh, application, so to speak, that is able to provide a variety of solutions. Just imagine currently we have a uh, uh, Mwaka that is providing a web-based solution in the education sector. Uh, we have uh, Elizabeth providing a solution, digital solution actually, okay, in the, in the food sector. Okay, so even for you, uh, what basically you need to do is uh, to scan the market, okay? Uh, what is it that you can be able to do to be able to provide a solution based on the challenges that the Zimbabwean people are facing? Business is about finding solutions. Entrepreneurship is about finding real solutions for the real needs of the people around you, okay? So what is very, very important is do a market scan. Find out the challenges that the people around you are facing. And then with the information that you get from that, be able to now devise something, considering that you are a developer there in Zimbabwe, devise something to be able to uh, solve uh, the challenges that the people or the communities in Zimbabwe are facing, okay? So that's the encouragement that I have for you. The digital solutions that are available, I mean, they're, they're for us to use. They're for us to be able to make our lives easier, okay? So. For instance, you, a long time ago, you know, you used to have uh, there. There was there was no 
machinery or I mean for you to reach out to customers you have to to do it through the radio but right now we have these social media platforms I mean just with my phone I'm able to reach to thousands and thousands and millions of people okay so use what you have currently which is the uh, the 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 uh, the skill that you have in terms of uh, uh, digital solutions and be able to just find solutions for the problems that there's people in Zimbabwe are facing. And trust me, people pay for solutions. You don't even yeah. need a lot of marketing. Yeah. People will pay you yeah. for solutions. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Thank you so much, Pambo, for that. Mwaka, do you have anything to say about that, being in the IT industry? Okay, to the same question Twambo has? Yes, yes. Yes, just to echo what Twambo said, just find a need. It's don't look at a want, because wants people can get, can do without. You need to find a need. What is it that the Zimbabwean people need? And mm -hmm. what solution are you bringing to the table? A good business is something that solves a problem. And this COVID, the economy in Zimbabwe, I'm sure has brought a lot of problems. So do a survey, find out the problems and bring a solution to the table. People will pay for a solution. Just like uh, Elizabeth has done door to door, I'm scared, I need to eat. Eating is a need. Education is a need. This, these are needs that take needs to people's doorstep. And technology is there to help you. It's very easy, just play around with your gadgets, ask people questions. People are always willing to help you with technology. It's something that with, with no time, you'll be good at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just find a solution to a need, not a want, to a need. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone has had an interesting discussion and have picked up one or two things on how to survive the COVID and post COVID. And I hope everybody can pick up one or two things, how to start a business and still see it through. We've come to the end of our webinar, which has been very enlightening. A great opportunity that all of us have had. I've learned so much and I'm hoping that the panelists as well as the viewers have all learned so much. Thank you so much, Twambo, for being with us. Mwaka, thank you so much. Elizabeth, you've been amazing. And to everyone out there, I just want to leave you with something. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. That was by Albert Einstein. So I'm hoping that the COVID has really awakened something in all of us to start and grow whatever it is that we are interested in thank you so much hope to see you next time for another interesting dialogue thank you to sanko thank you to clean consulting and the mother body intel cup thank you for giving us an opportunity to speak to a wider community about what it is that we do and who we are and introducing intel cup and sound cup to the southern africa region Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Shana. Thank it you. was our pleasure as well to uh, co-host this dialogue with you. And Elizabeth, Maka, and Pambo, uh, you honestly have really great stories. And uh, Sankalp as a, as a initiative of IntelliCap is all about uh, you know entrepreneurs like you. And uh, this was just a small effort from us to reach out to the larger ecosystem in Zambia. Uh, but uh, I would like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to join us uh, for our first ever global uh, Sankal summit that we're doing uh, in November. Uh, you will hear from us, uh, you know, very, very soon when we uh, go live with our agenda and speakers. Uh, we're really looking forward to, you know, involve Zambia more in the global discussion um, and not just, you know, have isolated conversations. Um, so look forward to it. It's happening in November. Uh, and we, like I said, reach out to you uh, so that you can join us there as well. Mm -hmm.